my channel. So for today's video, we're going to talk about the case of Lorenzo Gonzalez Cacho. And this case took place in Puerto Rico and it's the first time that I bring a case from there. But before we start this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't done already and click the bell next to the subscribe button so you get notified every time I upload a new video. And if you want to suggest a case, like this case was suggested by one of you, so if you want to suggest a case, you can reach out to me through the comments or through my social media. My Instagram and my Twitter will be linked down below in the description box. And having all that said, let's just start this video. Lorenzo Gonzalez Castro was born on November 29th of 2001. He was the middle child to Amahed Ali Gonzalez and Ana Castro. He also had two sisters. And from a young age, Lorenzo showed interest in sports, he played soccer, and he was studying in Dorado Ac Academy in his hometown. And at the time of his death, his parents were in the process of a divorce. On March 9th of 2010, Ana Castro took Lorenzo to the Treatment and Diagnostics Clinic Center in Dorado in Puerto Rico. They arrived there between 5 and 5.30 p.m. and Lorenzo was covered in blood. He was pronounced dead at the clinic. Anna claimed that Lorenzo had fallen from his bed and then she immediately took him to the clinic. However, the autopsy revealed that he had several injuries to his face, including three stabbing wounds. So he didn't just fell off the bed. Now let's talk about the timeline of this case. On March 8th, Gustavo was released incorrectly from jail, and he had been in jail for the murder of Oscar Pacheco Garcia. On March 9, apparently Lorenzo fell off the bed, woke up his legal sister Ana Cristina, and she went to wake up her mother, saying that Lorenzo had wet her with blood. Immediately, Ana took Lorenzo to the clinic where he was declared dead, and the police was called to the clinic. On the same day, Agent Jaime Cruz arrived at Lorenzo's house at around 6 a.m. to guard it. And the Institute of Forensic Sciences and Prosecutor on Duty, Mariela Santini, arrived at the house at around 9 a.m. Anna Castro and her youngest daughter are interviewed by the police. Dr. Carlos Chavez, who was the doctor who executed the autopsy on Lorenzo's body, communicates to the prosecutor's office the cause of death, indicating that he was a homicide. Police officers then tell Anna Castro that his death was not accidental. On the next day, on March 10, investigators arrived at the scene and took videos and photos in a bag containing the documents of the release of Luis Gustavo, and they also found in the courtyard of the, her residence a toothbrush and a toothpaste. On March 15th, Anna was interviewed by the prosecutor Juana Casiano, and she refused to testify on the recommendation of her lawyers, and at that time, she was officially considered a suspect, and she later admitted that she didn't testify because she was seen in the press as a suspect already, so she just refused to testify. It doesn't make real made sense to me because uh, wouldn't you want to prove that you had nothing to do with your son's murder? But you know, different people have different reactions. On March 23rd, Luis Gustavo was arrested again and returned to prison, and this was 14 days after Lorenzo's death, and he was also interviewed by investigators. On April 8th, he was interviewed again and he says that at around 2.30 on that night, he was at Burger King having dinner or whatever. And that Burger King was near Lorenzo's residence. However, the site manager didn't confirm this. At the end of March, Superintendent of Police, Jose Sanchez, requested FBI cooperation in the investigation. On June 6th, Anna attends the FBI offices to request research assistance and she is interviewed. So Anna tells them her version of the facts and she claims that she had not participated in her son's murder. Two months later, on August 6, Luis Gustavo is taken by police officers to the FBI offices and he is interviewed. And allegedly, this is when he confesses the crime. He explains everything in detail, how everything happened. He describes the scene and the use of a sharp weapon. And he said that then he left the residence and that's probably when he dropped his back. And he made a statement of his handwriting, accepting responsibility for Lorenzo's death. FBI agents took Luis Gustavo to where he apparently murdered Lorenzo. And the description of the house and its contents validate Luis Gustavo's confession. So FBI agents communicated this to justice. They also communicated this to the local authorities. They said that local authorities didn't have any reaction and then they left the investigation. So it seems that this case is closed, is solved. 
Luis Gustavo confesses the crime, but no. Local authorities have other theories, and between 2011 and 2012, they decide to investigate these theories and angles that suggest other people's participation in Lorenzo's death, and Luis Gustavo is no longer considered a suspect. Then, in March 2013, FBI agent resumed the investigation. On November 13, Luis Gustavo is interviewed again by FBI agents in the psychiatry hospital, and Luis admitted having entered Lorenzo's house but says nothing about killing him. Luis Gustavo was diagnosed with a mental disorder, so maybe he only confessed the crime because he really believed that he had done it, even though he didn't, or maybe he felt pressured to admit he did it. I don't know, but we have to have in mind that he had a mental disorder. On January 26th of 2014, Luis Gustavo is interviewed again and he describes everything that happened in that night, his movements, he describes everything that he did and he also says that innocent people should not be blamed. And this interview was held inside of an Acacia residence. On October 15th of the same year, Luis Gustavo is interviewed once again by the FBI agencies and he confesses again to the murder of Lorenzo. So he says that he killed him with a knife that he took from the kitchen of Lorenzo's house when he noticed that Lorenzo was awake and had noticed his presence. On March 8 of 2016, Luis Gustavo is found guilty of the murder of Lorenzo. And to think that he wasn't even supposed to be there, he was supposed to be in prison, but he was released by mistake. A mistake that cost a child's life. So let me know in the comments what you guys think about this case as usual and if you haven't done already please subscribe to my channel and turn the post notifications on so you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. I upload videos every Saturday and if you want to suggest a case you can reach out to me through the comments or through my social media. My Instagram and my Twitter will be linked down below in the description box. And that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on my next video. Bye bye!